I'm good. Jet lagged, but good. Yeah. Yeah. Just back from London. Just back from London. All right. Well, well I'm glad you could be here today. I'm very happy to be here on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Between two actors. <laughs> yeah. Little ferns. It's the little Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. Right. Show. That's yeah. it. So. I don't know if everybody knows we went to high school together. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, you remember? Yeah, I'm not that okay. old. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> you were a grade older than me, right? Yeah. Just one grade. Yeah. I remember you were in Bye Bye Birdie. Oh, man. Right? Yeah. You did that. I'd forgotten about I, that. I just remember you and your brother being like, because you're a twin, for mm -hmm. everyone that doesn't know. I don't know. I feel like you guys were just like flirty, happy dudes in high school. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what we were. That's how you remember me? I remember Molly and I, yeah, you guys were just like very big, the biggest flirts. Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. It worked out. And you were older. I, anyone who was above my grade, I always felt like was like untouchable. Really? No matter who you are. Yeah. It was just like, oh, they're older. Like that's a big, that was being a, big a senior deal. was just like, whoa. Right. Yeah, totally different. That's probably why you thought I was flirting. Maybe. Because, yeah, it was just. We weren't in the same drama class though, right? With Mrs. Weldon? No, but we had a musical theater class together, I think. Yeah. And I remember you knocking it out of the park in, in one moment. I well, remember you were, that. You were singing by a piano and I remember you get really emotional. And I was like, who's that? Well, I remember I did a song for an audition that I had for Moulin Rouge. So I was uh. like, I had practiced that so many times already. Oh, <laughs> that's not very fair. <laughs> you had it in the bag, Yeah, right? I had that. I was like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do, yeah. So you just rehearsed that for a while and you yeah, I you mean, came in there and we, we all thought you had just, you know, something you picked up the night before. No, that was well rehearsed. What a punk. Oh, you know. I had to make up for all my absent, absent days. Yeah. Rarely there. Yeah, rarely there. But when I was there, I was, yeah, I was like... Very present. But yeah. I remember I had office duty because Mrs. Goosen, who worked with like me and gave me all my schoolwork and stuff, she was like, I wanted to take all these AP classes and be very smart. She was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you already know what you're doing in life. You're not right. going to college. Just just take, do office duty. So I remember oh. like I'd have to go. I don't know if I had never, ever got your sheets. You know how people would come yeah. in? Yeah. Did I ever come into your class? Oh, no. I always was very afraid to go to the senior classes. That's interesting. To get the absentee, you know, or whatever the, it's wh the what do you call it? I don't know, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. The first counselor that's telling you not to go to college. Yeah, she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, well, she was right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a big fan of Fargo, everybody is. Thanks, Rami. We like seeing you collect magazines and toilet paper. Yeah. What made you want to collect magazines and toilet paper? Um. <laughs> She's much more than that, I know. I know. I really like Costco a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Kirkland products. <laughs> They're a big staple at my house. Uh, no, I just um, saw the first season, and it was so amazing. And I knew that I read the first two scripts, met with Noah Hawley, the creator, and he's such a brilliant man, and it was just such a unique, crazy, weird lady she was, and I knew that whatever other scripts were to fall, I would have a really exciting part to play. And it turned out for me to be one of the best roles I've ever played, for me. Wow. Like you're inferior somehow. And I, like, like if you could just get your act together until you're half mad. People are dead, Peggy. How was the process of like getting that role? You know, I when I watch it, I, I think about like how hard it must be to have those internal thoughts all the time. Yeah. And like, do you do it there on the day or do you go like back in a sound, you know? Yeah, no, we do, uh, we do it, I'll have it in my ear on the day. Your own voice? Not my voice, I tried to get my voice and that was just, that's really disturbing. To the, hear yourself. To hear yourself in your ear when you're trying to act. Yeah, that, that sounds horrible. Yeah, right. it's horrible. Yeah, that does And you sound think horrible. it would do riveting things on camera, <laughs> but it, it, it only makes you very self-conscious. Um, I would do it in post. I had, you know, someone, uh, a girl reading it in my ear. At first I tried to memorize it all and do it with my own timing, but right. that proved to just be way too difficult. Yeah, that's overwhelming. It, it is. Yeah. 
But it was, you know, it's something we do all the time. As human beings, we're constantly having, you know, these subconscious thoughts and telling ourselves the craziest things that if you really said out loud, they'd either be, I think, a, a relief to hear or you'd realize just how crazy we all were. Yeah. But uh, it's nice. It's really cool to have that because, you know, I think we're always searching as actors to, to play the subconscious. And I have it right there, you know, being, being whispered into my ear. So in a sense, it's difficult, but at other times I, I find it's, uh, it's a bit of a luxury for an actor. I understand what it's like to be different. I'm very different too. I feel like if I had to play your role, like I wouldn't want to hear anything. You wouldn't? I don't know why, yeah. I feel like I maybe I'd want to hear like a song or like, I don't know, I, I don't know. I feel like it'd be, it's just, right. yeah, I don't know. You know what's crazy? Have you ever worked with an actor who gets their lines piped in through their ears? No. Oh. I only know that I think Johnny Depp plays music in his ear. Yeah. That's the only thing I've ever heard of. I started getting the music <laughs> played, not during, <laughs> while acting with others, but if it was a scene where it was just like a, a moment alone, which I had a lot, I was yeah. like, hey, if I can listen to people's voices, I can listen to some cool tunes yeah, too, so. Yeah, that's a good move. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely worked with people that have music going on the set when we don't have to worry about sound, but I couldn't listen to music and act with anyone no. either. That's way too distracting for me too. What about music in like to prepare? It depends. Like I've gone through phases where I don't want to listen to anything or mm -hmm. one scene. I think like, okay, I, I, this is the piece of music I thought of when I was preparing and so I'm going to use it. But um, Fargo, I only really had this Dolly Parton song called Here I Am that mm -hmm. like really whenever I was, I don't know, feeling my, like Peggy was feeling herself mm -hmm. and all powerful. <laughs> that was definitely one song that I listened to. And then Noah Hawley put together an incredible mix of like the weirdest music. He's, you know, that, that's, that's actually in the show too, but he's, yeah. yeah. He basically was our, our music supervisor too. Yeah, Sam Esmail on my show does the same thing. We both have some, some pretty smart guys at the helm. I, I imagine that's, you know, that, that delivers a sense of calm. I think when you have someone who is as talented as that and as grounded, I met him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've met Sam too, because yeah. between all of us, like seeing each other yeah. at all these fun little events. It's getting incestuous. Sam always comes and says hi to Noah. Yeah. And me, and I know his fiance, and so a little bit, but mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah, he loves your show. He's the one that he told me, he goes, you have to watch Fargo. That's and nice to hear. And he loves you in it, yeah. Any challenges you faced as an actor? Of course you have. Me? Yeah, what have been the most difficult things? you've either had to deal with in the moment or overcome in time? Uh, hmm. I feel like there's always challenges. It's yeah. just like how you handle them. And like, I think the best thing to have as an actor is a good sense of self and like be grounded and like it doesn't really, you know, all this stuff is just extra fun things that go along with it. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I guess the, the biggest challenge is working with other people that aren't like-minded and feel, um, I don't know, you, we have to deal with so many different kinds of egos in this industry and, and I, I just try to surround myself, like the older I get, I just won't do a movie. I'd rather not do something than force myself into a situation that I know won't be, be important to, to me in my life. Mm -hmm. Is there one audition that you feel like you either, well, one that, how about you were like, yes, I nailed that. Cause who cares? you know, yeah. obviously we all have the auditions that we wish we got that part and we didn't. And <laughs> that, you know, I would, there was a period for me where I was like, I wish I could just collect a bunch of auditions and <laughs> show them to people. Cause I thought they were really good. Apparently they weren't because <laughs> I, I never ended up getting those gigs for some reason or another. But I wish, you know, I look back and I get asked, like, you know, how, how is this job for you? What, what, what does it entail? And that's such a huge part of it. Um, how many characters that I feel I've created simply just for auditions. Yeah. It's, 
it's a pretty cool body of work for like five or ten minute pieces here and there. No, I know. I did I did one audition where I had to sing, and I remember like I I was so overwhelmed because I wanted the role so badly. Like it's one of my favorite characters in music, and mm -hmm. like I didn't get it, but I had to go back because I was so like I overly. I was stressed myself out so much that I got, I would get these migraines from singing because mm -hmm. I wasn't breathing right probably or I was just so overwhelmed and I had to go back and like I know I nailed it but like I I kept I was like I want that tape for myself right. because I I poured my heart and soul out and then it was like you didn't get it. <laughs> Did you did they ask you back or did you say oh, no, I'm going back? I had to go back. I had to go back because I li I literally gave myself like an instant migraine like I yeah. had to lay down dark like Bad, bad, bad. Ooh. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever called and said I need to go back? I really have to get this. You know, uh, come hell or high water. You know what that happened to me on Interview with the Vampire? I was with my coach. He was outside of the room and he listened on the door to hear like what I was doing. And he knows I didn't nail it. And I walked out and he was like, No, you go back in there. He's like apologized to the casting director. He's like, She didn't do what she can do. Wow. Yeah. Well that worked out. Yeah. <laughs> there was a few more auditions after that but yeah that was an intense process now because it's so infrequent like it's the most stressful thing to me on the planet earth I hate it like horrifying oh I I, I feel <clears throat> opposite I like it I like going in there because it's like it's a proving ground you know you get to test some things out and no you hate it I hate it I dig it I don't like it because I don't know what the, when you get the role then your process is different though mm -hmm. so for me it's like totally it's so out of school of like how when I used to audition a lot like I had little things I would do like get up turn around like have little things that people would remember you by you had like your tricks my tricks yeah and now it's like I don't have that trick bag and if I don't get it then I feel like an extra failure because I have like <laughs> a body of work enough that like right. I feel like the, a real loser <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tough going back in there after I mean, I'm sure offers have been coming your way for a long time. Well, are you been very picky about what I'm you've I'm very, done? very picky, yeah. yeah. But, but what's, okay, I'll ask you what, when you do prepare for a role, what's your process? Like, what, do you, what steps you go through before you start? For a role, if, saying I've got the role? You got the role, yeah. Like, here's a script. I, you know, I have like the initial panic attack if, if I can do it mm -hmm. and do it properly. And I'll, tr you know, I've gotten better at getting over that quicker, but uh, I'll just try to do as much, as much research as I can initially. I'll, you know, I'll find pictures. I'll, I'll get songs. Anything that I feel inspires or influences me, or maybe something that you know, that character would listen to. Yeah. And then do all the do all the research um, based on who who it is and and what they're going through, and usually. You know, they're suffering through something. So just get in that mindset. And yeah. then I, I feel the most creative in, in the morning and in the evening. So I reserve that time to just delve in it in any way. And, and uh, I, I have, you know, I, I just try to uh, create memories and, and images for myself and that allows me kind of a window into who that person is mm -hmm. and you know obviously start creating their world in in that way of imagining every aspect of their lives up until the point I get to play them yeah and then you kind of have to be like and then you yeah you got to throw it away otherwise yeah, people are like what the, the hell is that like, person yeah. going on <laughs> what's going on <laughs> I'm not saying anything new. We all know why we do this. Not because Hunger Games books makes us happy, but because we want to be sedated. Because it's painful not to pretend. Because we're cowards. Was there a specific moment where you felt, oh, I'm, I'm going to be all right. This is working out. Was there a big break moment? I, okay. I think there's been like a few breaks because I think because I started so young, like you kind of have to prove yourself in different stages of your life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like obviously my first mo big movie was my first big break, was, was Interview with the Vampire. And then I feel like, like Virgin Suicides was a big turning point for me because it was the first time that I was allowed to like have sexuality and like it was in, done in such a beautiful way that it wasn't um, salacious at all mm -hmm. or, and, um, 
it was, yeah, done in a beautiful way. And then I feel like Spider-Man was a huge break because it allowed me to do whatever I wanted to kind of after that and get things financed. Um, and then I feel like Melanie So everything Falk. you've done basically No, there's to... a lot of, <laughs> no, but like they're definitely like turning age shifts for me that I right. got to do that not everyone gets to do because you don't know how people are gonna accept you as a 16 year old to a 25 year old to a 30 year old. Like they, you know, you, not everyone gets to go and keep right. working. And so I'm lucky that I, you know, got to keep working. On the flip side of that, is there a particular role or film that uh, you wish people had seen that didn't get as much coverage as, as you thought it would? Huh, I don't know, I feel like. Everything you do, people see. That's not true <laughs> at all. But I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like everything, I don't know. It's, yeah. yeah, I don't really, people discover things if they want to, and I don't know, it just, yeah. yeah. How do you deal with Rami people now, like, recognizing you? And I feel like because you're on an amazing show, people are probably very respectful and cool. They, it, it's been odd because you, you think everybody's cool and respectful, but people, yeah, there's no you know, length that people won't go to try to snap a picture. I feel like on the train in, in New York, I'm getting more of these people who are just think they're, you know. <laughs> very subtly, subtly so not snapping subtle. a picture. Like, yeah, who holds their phone at this height? <laughs> right. <laughs> when they're texting. Um, you know what's, what's difficult I, is, you know, I'm in, I'm in New York now and, mm -hmm. and I pride myself on being an outgoing person who says hello to everyone, wants to talk to everybody and, um, I can't do that quite as much anymore. It's, uh, that's become difficult. I feel like I'm walking out in the streets and, and keeping my head towards the pavement. Like very your much character, like you the got character. your character, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I couldn't wear a hoodie, but I do end up feeling like I need to put one on every <laughs> once in a while. Uh, and that's kind of, that's, that's been a bit unnerving, but, but I, you know, it's it's part of what we do, and it it means that people appreciate what I'm doing. Yeah. So. And I feel like a lot of it's in your own mind sometimes. Like yeah. sometimes, when a movie comes out, or like, or just it, people don't think about you; they think about themselves. Like everyone thinks about themselves. So yeah. really, I think if anything ever comes out that's like negative for me or something, I just have to remember like the only person that really cares about this is you. Yeah. Nobody else does. You know. I feel like you've done a really good job of keeping yourself out of, you know, yeah, I've, the really I've tabloid tried. I've thing. tried. <laughs> yeah, have you? I just stay at home. <laughs> Do you? you no, you, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I stick to the valley. You do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're a homebody. I'm a, yeah, I Who am. can't cook. Who can't cook, no. I know Postmates that. Postmates is the end of my life. I know, did you just lo <laughs> love when you found that? <laughs> Uber and Postmates is <laughs> the demise of my existence. <laughs> back, to, I, back to acting, let me okay. ask you this. You've worked with such <clears throat> great actors, and yeah. I wanna know, I'm always qu asking myself this, what are, what are people looking for in us? What do you look for in a co-star? Or what do you hope arrives at you when you find out who you're working with? I hope that I have a teammate, you know what I mean? I hope that like, that I have someone who, you know, you always like, I like to get to know someone, but not everyone wants to do that. And I'm fine with that as well. But I, I like when the, the way we approach things is, you know, just trying to be there for each other mm -hmm. and have a very trusting like, you know, open conversation at all times and have each other's back, mostly. Just to have someone who's not, you know, those actors that are like, like, oh, where's the camera? <laughs> or like trying to like outperform each other or, I mean, it just takes the joy away of everything that you do. And I, I feel like, yeah, the best actors I've worked with are the ones that just want to make something special together. Right. And like, well, you know they have your back and you can just go for it and no yeah. one, you know, they've got you. I feel like you know when it's, when you know the camera's on you and uh, they're still giving it all. Oh yeah, you totally know. Right? Those people are like, you're like suddenly you just dropped off. Someone, if someone drops off, I'm I like, know, it's oh, such a one of those. But 
I, I think that's why I like two shots so much because you can't do, you know, you have to, both people are right. in it together. When they cross cover? No, or? well that's always fun too, but just I enjoy watching two people on screen together the most, always. Gotcha. Like I love it, yeah. yeah. I mean that's like, yeah. And I like when you feel like the camera follows the actors and you kind of can do whatever you want and then you know, they're kind of following you and you don't know who, what, where the camera is or who it's on. I like movies that work like that, too. Okay, you little fire. No, the Indian got away, okay? We followed Ed's blood trail. Okay, kicked in the door, us. Oh, the Indian here. was never in the building. No, he was. No. Ed, I'll tell you. Ed, 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 come on, Ed. We're saved. What do you think for yourself and acting and all of it, like how do you, how do you feel that the difference is between making a film versus working in television? Uh, well, I, I think I've heard you say this after, after Fargo, was that uh, it's, it's very difficult in a sense in how much you're shooting in a day. Yeah, uh, it's way harder, yeah. I think, television. You do. Yeah, you do. It's much harder work. You have so much, it's like 10 pages a day in television, like three or five at the most in yeah. film. You're, double, you're doubling your work schedule every day. I, yeah, I look at it from that perspective, but also, you, you know, once you dive into the character and you, you understand and know him, it, you only get a chance, or her, to add, add layers day in and day out. And so it's nice having a core, you know, that you can come back to every day. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it can be very demanding, but I love how character-driven everything is these days. Yeah, and television to me is like the adult film now. It's yeah. like, and film is a little bit for kids more now. Yeah. It's like superhero movies and all the quality, like, you know, and people actually watch television and, you it's know, you true. do an indie and, you know, you're no lucky if anyone it. sees it, yeah. yeah. And you don't get paid, but in television right. it's like everything. And I feel like both of the things we got to work on uh, were very cinematic. And yes. I've, I've heard your DP talk about you know, his lenses and, and what he's using, and our DP is, I mean, they're, they're at the top of their game. Yes, very much so. And you, I do feel like I'm working on a film yeah. every day. It's just, No, it looks yeah. that way, the acting is, it's just, yeah, the quality yeah. is, television's, yeah, so right. much more elevated these days. But yeah, I mean, getting to play a character like Elliot or Peggy that you know, is you, you really get to see their evolution through the course of so many hours over trying to trying to do that in, in a, the course of two is very difficult. So I've really enjoyed it. I, I can see myself, if the opportunity presents itself to have another great character like that. Yeah, I Absolutely. know, me too. I want to work in television again, 100%. And then you think, I think about like all the work that goes into preparing for it and of course you know it's our job but yeah it's nice to you know have multiple hours to to work through that and yeah it's but I feel like too I don't know for me the way I work I work I have a woman that I work with we do a lot of dream work and so like every episode I was like oh, I gotta like it felt like the beginning of a movie every time uh. because over the course of like preparing for a movie I'll do like work with like two dreams three dreams maybe well, explain to me how that works well, you kind you write something before you go to bed. Okay. And then if you dream that night, you kind of you use whatever, you know, you write yourself a personal note okay. and then whatever you dream. And if you don't, you just keep doing it until you dream. And then you use whatever you've dreamt for your character. Like for Peggy, I I uh, part of my dream I I saw this little like cassette and it said Scooby Doo on it. And so I, my the lady who I worked with She's like, well, what do you think about when you think about Scooby-Doo? I was like, well, they walk kind of funny. You know, they're like always like scurrying yeah. you know, around. She does have all a together. And so quote. Peggy had a little Scooby, so I'd think Scooby-Doo for Peggy for just like, that's a small thing, but like for her walk. Mm -hmm. But then I had horrible dreams while I was filming of, I remember I had a dream of, and it was probably because at the end we're in a meat locker with all these like pigs hanging around us. And it was before we shot that scene but I had a dream that like I wanted a hot dog mm -hmm. and the hot dog <laughs> became this little baby pig that was like squealing, like being dipped in boiling hot water and taking out, being like dipped and taken out again and like screeching. And it was so horrible. I woke up <laughs> like, I think I might become a vegetarian <laughs> after this horrible dream. But yeah, I get very like, you know, I, yeah, when I'm 
doing something, especially Fargo, I had some crazy dreams.